farewell list. In loving memory of the victims of incurable diseases all over the world. The worst epidemic on earth is man Jacques-Yves Cousteau. Dr. Francesca Cortellero, who works at Milan San Carlo Borromeo Hospital, told an Italian newspaper. You know what's most dramatic? Seeing patients dying alone, listening to them as they beg you to say goodbye to their children and grandchildren. Coronavirus patients arrive on their own, and when they are about to die, they sense it. They are lucid, they do not go into narcolepsy. It is as if they were drowning, but with time to understand it. She described how a dying grandmother had recently asked her to see her granddaughter. I pulled out the phone and called her on video. They said goodbye. Soon after, she was gone. By now, I have a long list of video calls. I call it a farewell list. Italian doctors, we are like soldiers on the front without weapons. Healthcare workers warn they don't have the right resources to protect themselves and their patients. Dr. John Perro Giron, aged 85, recently accepted his country's call to return to the front line against the coronavirus. He is among so many retired doctors and nurses who have done the same. They asked for my availability, and I said yes. When you decide to be a doctor, you get involved. I swore an oath. Afraid of getting sick? Then it is better not to be a doctor. My duty, regardless of age, doctors can make a difference at this stage. These articles inspired me to publish this e-book. Sanitary personnel are on the front line, waging the battle against the invisible enemy. In the near future, humans will wear masks to purify the contaminated air and record the quantity of oxygen we consume nowadays for free. Tobacco manufacturers will produce medicine instead of cigarettes. Water will be scarce and its price as high as alcohol. Man will deduce that his science was not exact in most cases. I wrote this paragraph in my first book An Unexpected Intruder in 2009. This could apply to 2020. This year reminded the whole world that we are one population, whose fate depends on the exactness of our science and the efficiency of our knowledge. It seems to me that the textile mask imposed on people to avoid the virus is going to lead to the metal mask with the counter for oxygen which will be monopolized by an anonymous multinational firm unfortunately someday as they have done with other vital resources. I had the chance to open my eyes on clean nature and spend my golden age by my grandmother, who gave me those first gems of life such are faith and patience. My grandmother used to exclaim at footballers, why do not they give them a ball each so that they stop fighting for one. She loved it when the bull won a corrida. I am a father of a girl aged 12 and a boy aged 5. Whenever I come back home from work at the end of the day, I have a shower before I let my children hug me. Next day, I have another shower before going to work. I remember my mother, who died aged 58, in 1999, say my son, keep away from me lest you get a contagion. She never went to school. When we had nothing to eat. My father prepared a meal he called sad sauce, eggs with spices. Have you ever gone shopping with half a euro? Is it a joke? I did it in the 1980s. Imagine what it could buy you. Half a kilo fish, half a kilo tomatoes, hot pepper and coriander is a good meal for five persons. I remember my father say about me, Muhammad did not cost me too much. When he fell ill, I knew that my best friend was to die. We went to Tangier, where he had a medical check. The diagnosis showed he had cancer. I did not believe what the doctor said while he talked to me in low voice so that the patient could not hear him. I heard my parents laugh in their room. I cried alone in my room. I knew my father's time was limited. He was on the farewell list. Thursday August 25, 1994, the funeral day. While I was receiving condolences, I worried about the black ants at my feet. Life had a greater value to me. I lost the poorest and the most generous man I knew. My father was a traditional baker. He used to give bread and shelter to tramps in his modest bakery. 
I cannot but thank both my parents for the effort, the time and the money they spent. Good education is the best legacy. When we think money is everything, we lose everything. Money is, indeed, the dirtiest thing on earth if not used properly. The unfair banking system is the main cause of human's misfortune. Bread for all is the least of human rights. Sadly, it is far from being a reality in today's world. When I was a student, someone told my father that I had an affair with a girl, whose hand, I swear, I never touched. At lunch, he told me a funny story of a wolf who wanted his father to go with him to ask the dog's daughter for marriage. The wolf told his son to go alone and say he is the wolf's son to convince the dog. What happened? I asked my father naively. The dogs chased him till he reached the forest he answered smiling. Only then did I know what he meant. I stayed by my mother for seven years. I called it civil service, as I had to assist other patients. I even used to empty catheters full of mixed urine and blood as the nurses did not care. I had a lasting headache as the mixture stank. This difficult experience taught me the meaning of it's better to prevent than to cure. I was with my mother in the civil hospital in Tatuan since 7.45. I gave her something to eat but she could not swallow it. She was in a critical situation. It was Saturday. There were no doctors. Who? The doctors are absent. Among so many other innocent patients, she was on the farewell list. Maybe, I was too young to guess. She spoke in a low voice. Mohammed, I feel pity for you. I kissed her front. I held back my tears so as not to make her sadder. I waited for the doctor in vain. At 13.45, after six hours, I was tired. I promised my mother to come back as soon as possible with something to eat. She did not answer, as she was agonizing without my knowledge. She was on the farewell list. I bathed and rested for a while. I had to go back to the hospital. I looked at the third floor wondering how my mother was. I imagined she was well. While I was going upstairs, I had a different feeling. I hurried towards her room. The nurse called me to present her condolences. I burst out crying. The two nurses gave me a chair. I feared this moment for seven years. You did what you could, Mohammed. The poor, she was to die eventually. She died a quarter an hour after you left. It was 2 a.m. Saturday, July 24, 1999 was a sad day. I stayed six hours by the body that bore me for nine months and withered after long years. No relative came, but sadness. I wished they buried me with her. After 20 years, I am here to tell you the story. Why do they build hospitals? Why do they pay taxes? If only they paid taxes. Thus, the lack of sanitary personnel and material, due to external debt and the interference of foes of national sovereignty of countries in domestic affairs with coercive measures serving the New World Order dictatorship by enslaving nations and people. Once, I wanted to buy a typing machine. The owner laughed at me saying it was too expensive for me. Humanity waited centuries for the typing machine. I waited only few years to acquire my first computer. A kind Moroccan journalist from Anadolu Agency contacted me for an interview. Thanks to her article, my story shined. Between 2015 and 2016, 2M, Ali Azira, BBC Arabic and Cap Radio invited me for an interview. I used to give my books to acquaintances and tourists as a souvenir. Since then, people came to congratulate me and ask me about my books. The more trees we plant, the more lives we save. Sadly, one only cigarette and can burn a whole forest. Contagion is the worst evil on earth. Few people used to swear, lie or smoke. Now, it is a pandemic. What if smokers stopped smoking, at least? once a week, and spared their time, health and money to give it to a benevolent association. One of my favorite places on earth is the seaside and one of my favorite music is the sound of birds twitting in a forest, of water murmuring between the rocks, of waves lashing the shore. 
My favorite perfume is the flavor of recently baked traditional bread, my father was a baker. My favorite nature scenery is a field of barley and poppies. I spent my early childhood in the country by my beloved grandmother on top of a hill from which I could see the Mediterranean Sea. I am a simple and humble man, a slave of our times. As the saying goes, wisdom leads to peace. I love peace like you all and I think one can find it in a good book. I do not have much time to waste, just enough to convey the message and die. Do not ask how or why they died, just pray for them.